We thank God. Look, I'm not going to hold you long. Um, I just have a quick word from the Lord, and I think that God really wants to speak something to us today. Um, our our um, verse, our opening verse is coming from John 4. So if you have a digital Bible, if you have a paper Bible, if you need a paper Bible, we got you. Uh, if you got a pen and a highlighter, come on, we going back to old school. Get you some sermon notes together. All right, so we're going to John 4, 34. John 4, 34. I'm actually getting fancy and reading from the voice translation, so yeah, just follow along as you can. All right, y'all, are y'all there? If not, it's on the screen. I just like for y'all to have your own thing so you don't take our word for it. We could be putting anything up there. We wouldn't do that. But I'm just saying, you should, you should be reading for yourself. Do your own investigative work for yourself. Amen. So it reads, verse 34, I receive my nourishment, this is Jesus talking, by serving the will of the Father who sent me and completing his work. You have heard others say, be patient. We have four months to wait until the crops are ready for the harvest. I say, take a closer look and you will see that the fields are ripe and ready for harvest. Amen. May the Lord bless God's holy word. Our subject today is harvest ready. Are you harvest ready? Amen. This is the Sunday that we are celebrating what we say harvest Sunday because, you know, the saints don't be doing Halloween um, in in this kind of capacity. So we used to have the hallelujah nights and the harvest nights. Anybody grew up with that? But the church hallelujahs and the whatnots, right? We call it harvest. We love a good harvest. We love a good Thanksgiving harvest feel. We, we love this. And I, I'm so glad November's coming. How many of y'all already got Christmas stuff up? Oh, good. I'm in the right. I was going to say, we're going to have prayer right now. Right now, prayer. Come to the altar and lay hands on you. Because my whole thing, y'all hear me say every year, we do poor little Thanksgiving. So sad. We just skip right over and just go straight to the trees. But this is our time of harvest. And this is what we want to talk about today. Are you harvest ready? Now, if you go into any typical black church on any given Sunday, we love, we love the concept of harvest. Amen? We love a good harvest sermon. Come on, uh, LJ, this is where I'm going to need you. Give me some good, some good harvest, some good getting the folk feeling good because we be like how many people is ready for a harvest and we be like yes as soon as you hear that you be like i said how many are ready for a harvest we be like yes sir i'm ready yes how many people ready for a harvest in their finances a harvest in their relationships a harvest in your health how many people want a harvest come on say harvest 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 Come on, lift your hands if you want a harvest. Say, God, I'm ready for a harvest. I'm ready, I'm ready. My God, my God. We ready. My case in point. This is where the, the disco scratch should come in there. We love a good harvest sermon. But what I want to talk today about is, do you know how much it takes to get to a harvest? Do you realize how much you need to go through to actually hold a harvest in your hand? So we want to just shout and be like, yes, Lord, the harvest right now, send it. But do have you ever realized how much work and time it takes to actually have a harvest? Come on, this is what we're talking about today, a harvest. Like uh, Alan Iverson, harvest? Harvest? We talking about harvest? We talking about harvest. One of my favorite stories, I don't know if y'all are like me, my, one of my favorite stories as a kid, you remember the little storybooks, was the story of the little red hen. Y'all remember that story? Y'all might not know this. Some of the old school, we remember the little red hen. Some of y'all younger ones is like, what? They didn't have that at my, okay, good. The little red hen. 
I don't know why, even as a kid, I was like, I like this, I like this little hen. This hen all right with me. Cause she wasn't playing. If you need a refresher, I'm just gonna do a quick refresher. A little hen found a little grain of wheat, right? And she had some little friends, had like a lazy dog, a cat, and a, and a duck, right? They was just sitting around. She's like, oh, okay, found a little wheat. Who's gonna help me plant it? And they was like, not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said, y'all remember that? So she was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. She's like, okay, now who gonna help me cut it and thresh it? And they was like, nah, that ain't me, fam. We, we sleep, we doing stuff, not I, not I, not I. She's like, okay, cool, cool. Well, who will help me turn this flour that I, that I made into bread? They was like, yeah, I'm a little busy right now. Not me, not me, not me. And then when it finally came time at the end, she's like, well, who gonna help me eat this bread? And all of a sudden, all the hands went up like, we will, we will, what right here, we got you. And I loved the little red hen because she was like, no, no, you won't. You didn't want to help me with any of it. So now you won't, you wouldn't help with the work. So now you're not going to help, you're not going to eat the bread. And she gave it to her and her little chicks. Y'all remember that? I remember this story. And I was like, this hen is all right with me. I remember the shade of it all. Even as a kid, like, yeah, I got to eat her. You got to put some work in it. So this is the same concept of the little hen I feel that we have with the harvest, with the concept of harvest. We love the end results without the process. We love it. We want to, we live in Uber Eats microwaves. We want it now. We be mad tracking the little thing like, where they at? They just want, we want it now. But there's a whole process to harvesting. There's a whole process. So y'all just follow me. This, um, there's a principle of the harvest. And you could read all through the Old Testament and even now. But there is a principle that applies to both the earth and then it applies to our spiritual lives. I love the way the Bible always uses these analogies, always takes the physical things so that we can um, equate it to our spiritual lives, right? So um, the first principle we see is in Genesis 8.22. If you have your Bibles, take notes, look at it, read it later. But it says Genesis 8.22 is a principle of harvest that the Lord uh, put into practice right after the flood, right after Noah and the flood. He's like, all right, I'm going to resituate things. So this is what I'm saying. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, night and day will never cease. This is a principle of harvest. God has established this in the earth. As long as the earth exists, these things will always be. All right, y'all following with me? So if this is happening in the earth, could this same principle be happening in your life right now? Could this same thing be going on in your life? Come on, sea time, harvest, cold, heat, summer, winter, night and day. There, there's rhythms to our life. Have you recognized that there's a rhythm to your life? There's never a perpetual summer in the physical and in, in the natural. There's never, a, as well, there's never a perpetual winter. All right? So just as the earth is showing us these things, these things are also going on in our souls. But we will mistake cold, winter, all these unpleasant seasons as life. This is my life. This is where I am. I'm never making it out of this. But I'm just here to encourage you today that there is a process to getting your harvest. Amen? The first thing to get your harvest, the process. Come on, we're going to be farmers today. Come on, put your, your overalls on. We got to, I know we city folk, but anybody from the country? I'm not. Okay, yeah, we got some country folk. Y'all know, yeah. I, I, I have no frame of reference. I could go to the petting zoo, perhaps, but um, we're going to put our overalls on. This is what it takes to process a harvest. First thing you have to do is till the land. Come on, y'all kind of know these things. Till the land, and I'm looking at Hosea 10 and 12. This is the famous whining song that we love so much. It says, sow for yourself righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. What a beautiful verse. 
First things first is that we got to till the ground. We got to break up fallow ground. We have to, there's hardened soil in our hearts, in our minds that we need to break up. Try to put some seed on some dirt that's like concrete. It's not going in. It's not pliable. It's not malleable, right? Same with our hearts. Sometimes we have these hard, stony hearts and minds and nothing can penetrate it. The word of God can't even get to it. So whose responsibility is it, it, is it to break up the fallow ground? It's a trick question. Everybody's like, I don't, I don't want to know. Yes, I see that hand. It's on us, Brother Gennaro. It's on us. We can't be like, God, can you just till my ground? Can you break it up for me? God, just take it away, God. Just take it away. Do it now, God. Yes, God can do whatever God wants to do, but it is our responsibility to get into our hearts, to start breaking up, start digging up. This is why we are encouraging therapy. We got to get down to the root of things. Why are we acting out? Why are we being angry? Why do we do? How do we react the way we react? Perhaps we need to break up some ground and get down to the root of why and when and where, right? Hallelujah for breaking up the ground. That's our first thing. Any farmer knows you got to just, you got to get the soil right. The second thing is that you have to sow a seed. Right? You can't just break up the ground. Now, that's where we, we break it up. We got it all open. And then we don't put nothing else in it. We're like, I got to the root. But you just got a barren land of dirt in your heart and in your mind. I did all the work. But did you sow anything into the work that you have put into? Galatians 6, 7, and 9. So good. Y'all don't mind just walking through the word of God, do you? Because... It could preach better than I could ever even try. The word of God says in Galatians 6, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whosoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. I love verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest, but it's a caveat, if we do not give up. That's so good. That's all. It's good by itself. You could just sit in this word. What God is telling us, we have to sow the seed. Now, this is a very important because it is very important that we sow something. But what you sow is what you're going to get back. So you got to be careful what seeds you're putting down. Don't put no, you know, tomato seeds down and then you expect the mangoes. Like, come on. You have to put the seed that you want. If you sow into your flesh... You're going to get destruction. Anybody been there before? You did all the things you wanted to do. You just felt all the things. And where did it end? Heartache, destruction, the bad consequences, right? But when we sow into the spirit, it does something so good in our hearts. It reaps eternal life. It reaps life. So we have to be careful of what we're sowing. I love it says, don't be weary in doing good. We're going to talk about that for a minute. I'm going to hold that, bookmark that, bookmark that. Number two, we got the fallow ground tilled. We got seed sown. Now we got to add a little fertilizer. Y'all, we got to add a little somebody already, already with me. Now, I'm not at a Baptist church, so I can't say what I really want to say. But sometimes you got to go through some in order to grow. You got to go through some, huh? How many been through some fertilizer? Why do people use fertilizer? To make it grow. Could it be? That the things you are going through that you are perceiving as a bunch of fertilizer. 
it's really designed to help you grow. Maybe that's the fertilizer God is using in your life to bring a better crop, to bring more abundance, to bring, see, you seeing it one way, God seeing it another way. Okay, they think they doing something. They think they doing something, but I'm really causing you to grow. I'm gonna let you do with that what you want to. You can just take that where you want to take it in your mind. But somebody say, thank God for the fertilizer. And the and the smell. See, you couldn't take it. Oh, see, it was working for your good, my God. So we're going to move on from that. We got the fertilizer. Now then, what happens? Every farmer needs a rainy season. That's what we're going through right now in California. Lord, we need rain. Jesus, send it. Because I want to take my showers in the way I want to. So Lord, send the rain. Now, let me tell you about this rainy season. We love songs about the rain. We be like, Lord, send the rain, Jesus. We like the song. There's so many songs. Go on Spotify. You just look for gospel songs about rain. We woo the rain. We just singing it, right? We love the rain. But when the rain comes, it also, it usually comes in the form of a storm, right? We need rain. Everybody know we need rain, we need water, but it often comes in the form of a storm. And when rain comes, it's usually messy. I want to be a person who loves the rain. I, you know, I want to, but I, I, how many of y'all, anybody else, they don't quite like being out in the rain. I like the rain when I'm inside with a book, maybe a little hot cocoa. But if I got to be out and about, no, ma'am. It's a lot, it's a thing, it's messy. We pray for rain, but the rain brings mud. The rain brings dampness. The rain messes up our hair, amen, all the black ladies in the house. It's a whole situation with rain, but we need, a, we need the rain. So maybe God is inviting us to change how you see the storm. We want the harvest. We want God to do these wonderful things in our lives, but you need rain to water it. We need the storms. We over here, God, Lord, I'm just going through a storm. How you doing, Sid? Just going through a storm. Just, it's just stormy in my life. Well, perhaps God is sending that rain like he did the fertilizer to grow you, to bring the nutrients you need. Stop disdaining that, that storm. Stop rebuking that storm. That's the Lord's job. The Lord's job, he'll rebuke the storms if you need it. But sometimes we need to go through that storm to get the rain. Now, I want to make a public service announcement that only those who have seed in the ground are excited for the rain. Only those who, who got something coming. Only those who have sowed. Because you, you see the rain a little different. The rain is coming, and you're like, oh, good, yes, the rain is coming. I need it. I need it to grow. I need it to do some things. I need it for the nutrients. I need it for my, my harvest to grow. But somebody who don't have seed in the ground, who has not sowed into their spirit, who has not sown good things, who is sowing into their flesh, you're not excited about the rain. You're like, oh, here we go, the rain again. But those who have a hope, those who have an expectation, come on, we're going to welcome the rain. We're going to change how we're looking at the storm. God, bring it. Send the rain, the mess and all, the mud and all, everything that comes with it, because I need it to grow spiritually. Here's the last thing that we need. We got to wait. There's always a waiting season in the harvest process. Y'all know that? Even our opening verse says four months until the harvest. There's always a, a seasonal gap between sowing and reaping. There's always a gap between sowing and reaping. Why do we think when we sow something, tomorrow you're going to see a bing stop? We not, it's not fairy tales. We sow and then we like, oh, okay, I, I, I gave yesterday, so I don't understand why it's not happening. There is always a gap between sowing and reaping. So what is God teaching us in the gap? Patience. James 5 and 7. Write it down. Read it later or read it on the screen. James 5 and 7. It says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, 
until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield his valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. And I love that King James says the, the latter and the former rain. It takes time as a farmer to wait on what God is doing in your life. After you have sowed, after you have done all your due diligence, all of you have done all you can into people's lives, into their hearts, when you have sowed into doing the right thing, sometimes you just got to be patient and wait. But waiting on things in your life sometimes is like waiting for water to boil, right? Anybody? Try to wait, watching the water to boil. This is our time to just wait and relax in the Lord, to not jump the gun, to not, to, this is a word for someone who is just about to just go off the deep end and just do whatever because you're just waiting, you got impatient. Wait on the Lord. There's always a time of waiting in your harvest process. Now, finally, we finally to the end results. You did all the things. You've broke up the fallow ground. You've added your fertilizers. The rain has come. You are waiting. And then you see a little shoot. You see the harvest. The harvest is here. And we are happy about it, right? We get to the end of the results. We get our harvest, right? Praise the Lord. We're back to shouting. We're doing all the things. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest, right? This should be the end. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. But you know what, y'all? And if you were a farmer, you would notice the harvest is actually the hardest part of the process. Come on, we just shouted. I said, lift your hands if you want to harvest. People are like, yes, Lord. <laughs> the harvest is actually the hardest part of the whole process. When you get it, then you got to pick it. Then you got to gather it. Then you got to sort it. Then you got to thresh it. You got to do all these things. You got to get it in time. You can't let it get too ripe because then it will spoil. And then you got to hurry and do. It takes a lot of work to harvest. The things that you've been praying about in your life and in your heart, when it starts happening and manifesting, this is not the time to sit back and be chill. Be like, okay, cool, 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 got a harvest, that's good. No, on the contrary, this is our time to get busy, to get to the work, to organize it, to sort it, to get it together, to create your systems. It takes a lot to harvest. It's not just something to shout about, it's something to do, something to be intentional with. Where is God bringing the harvest in your life and what are you supposed to be doing in this season? Jesus knew this because he said in Luke, two, Luke 10 and 2, Jesus looked out and saw all the people, and he said, hey, y'all, the harvest is plenteous. It's plentiful. But the workers, on the other hand, they are few. And look, look, look he didn't say, now get, get busy, go get some bags and go start. No, no, no. This is what he said. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. I love this because it's the Lord who's in charge of the harvest. You know, we, we mistakenly think that this is the, the harvest of our lives, that this is my thing, this is what I made, this is what I created. But this is, it puts us in perspective, it's the Lord's harvest. It's the Lord's doing. Whatever God's doing in your life, it's the Lord's. So now, now we're gonna do, we're gonna change our prayer. We're gonna ask God to send people into the harvest. Why did Jesus say that? Because harvesting is hard. It's not just something you sit back and take Instagram pictures of. Anybody who just has a business or trying to do something or starting something, you know all the hard work that goes behind that picture, behind the event, behind the grade that you got, behind the, the business promotion, behind anything. There's hard work that goes behind it, so it's time to get busy, to get into the harvest, not just to shout about it, but to realize that there is a process to the harvest. When you get to the end, it is not the time to sit back. It is the time to be intentional. Come on, pat yourself on the chest and say, I got to be intentional. I got to be intentional. I got to be intentional. All right, so to wrap up, I got good news for those who are in a tough season. 
Raise your hand if you want to be honest and say, hey, I'm going through a tough season. It's a tough season. It's a tough season. I got good news for you. It's in Psalms 20, 126 and 6. This is a good old Pentecostal song they made out, made out of this song. But it says, those who go out weeping, hearing seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Now, we don't understand sheaves and all that. So it says they will sing, and as they return, they will return with the harvest. So I got good news for you. Those who are in a sad season, those who have been in a weeping season, those who have been in a rainy season, come on, am I in the right place? Those who have been in a place where you don't know what God is doing, I don't understand where I am in life, there is good news for you because when you go out weeping, if you sow in weeping, God said he's going to bring it back in joy. How many like that return? God, God, I'm sowing into this season. God, I'm, you, know what, what, you know what's watering my crop? Tears. Tears are watering this crop. Like, I don't know what else to do. I don't know where to co go. But God has promised in this scripture that you will return in joy with the harvest in hand. Come on, that is a promise for us. This season won't last always. How many believe that? That God is moving you from summer to winter and winter to summer. And God's moving you from cold to heat. God is doing these things in your life. There will, there will always be a perpetual season in your life. But you got to have hope. Have hope in those dark times. Have hope in them rainy times. Have hope during the fertilization season that God is doing a work in your life. And it's all to bring about a harvest, a harvest in your life. And you know that harvest is always for somebody else. Do you know that? You ever see an apple tree eating their own apples? You ever see an orange tree just chewing on, you know, banana tree, just peeling bananas? The fruit that God brings out of our lives is always for somebody else. It's not for us. God's doing a work in us like we just sang. It's for his glory. It's not that everybody look at me, get my followers up. It's for God's glory. It's for God's glory. So come on, let's just stand. We're just going to close this time in prayer. We have some reflection questions. Some things just to reflect on during the week. Try to keep these things in mind. Don't just go through the week and be like, "Woo, we had a time on Sunday. And then people are like, wait, what, did, what was it about? I don't know, but it was good and we had a good time. No, this is God. These are the things that God wants us to meditate on. Here's our reflection questions. As you reflect on what you have sown this year, what harvest are you expecting as of today? Would it be weeds? Is it a sparse crop? Or is it an abundant crop? What have you been sowing? Are you willing to go through the process of harvesting both in your personal and spiritual life? Do you just want the end results? Do you just want God just to bring you all the things without putting any time, energy, going through the storm, going through fertilization, going through dry seasons, going through? There's a whole process to getting to the end result of what God has for your life. So this is your time to be like, God, I surrender. I'm willing to go through whatever I'm going through because I see that it's not for my detriment. You're actually working it for my good. Somebody needs to hear that today. The things you are going through are actually working for your good. You thought that storm came to break you. That storm came to water you. You thought all that stuff, the betrayal, the lies, all these hurts are great. You thought that was to break you. That was actually to make you grow. God, change our perspectives. And then what can you do this week to sow to please the spirit 
We've sown into our flesh long enough. We've given our flesh everything it demands. Anybody been in a place where your flesh demands you to do stuff? Are we going here? Are we going to drink this? Are we going to smoke this? We going to... The flesh be over here punking us. It is time for us to sow into our spirit. We said it before on another Sunday. Who you feed the most is the one that's going to control you. Who you feed the most. So let's sow into that spirit. So God, even with this time, we just want to go into a time of prayer. God, we give you this time. Thank you for your word. It is powerful. It is living. It is active. God, you always meet us right where we need you. You always come through for us. So God, we want to just thank you for the harvest. God, you've promised a harvest of righteousness to those who believe in you. But God, we want to just take a moment and realize that there is a process to getting to the things that you want to birth in our lives. And we submit to the process today. Come on, will you lift your hands if you say, God, I will submit to the process. I know it's hard. I never thought I would say this. But God, I today I say I am willing to go through the process so that my life can yield a harvest that will bring you glory that will feed my community, that will feed those around me, that will feed my family, that will feed my neighbors, that will feed this community in in, in the Bay Area. God, use us. Don't let us just store up barns for ourselves. Don't let us just try to get people to look at us. But God, we want you, we invite you into the process. God, help us to sow into the Spirit to sow into the things of God, to feed that thing that's going to bring us life. God, I pray that you will help us to lose the taste for the things that are not pleasing to you. God, help us to have intention. And when you bring that prayer to life, when we see the little stalk rising up from the ground, when we see it coming to pass, God, give us the strength to harvest it. Give us the strength, God, to to be good stewards of what you're doing in our lives. Be good stewards of our relationships, good stewards of our businesses and our uh, academic endeavors, God, of our jobs and everywhere that you've put us, God. Help us to be good stewards of the things that we prayed for. We thank you, God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. So, God, we pray that you would help us to sow into your kingdom. God, we're praying that you would dig up all the all the, the bad seeds that we have planted in our lives and we just wanna thank you that we are excited for the rain. We are excited for what you're gonna do in our lives. This season won't last always. If you're going through a weeping season, a grieving season, a cold season, a rainy season, just know it won't last always. Another season is cycling through with hope and with joy and with peace. So as we close our time, we always want to open our our altar for anyone who would want to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. All these things only fall under the auspices of people who have given their lives to Jesus. The people who have have made the choice to become a believer. These are the benefits of living in God's kingdom. And if you are watching or you are here and you're like, I don't remember a time when I have given God my life. Will you just um, just repeat this prayer with me and after me and say, God, I need you. Jesus, I need you in my life. I realize that I've been trying to do these things on my own. But God, I want to give you my life. I want to give you my heart. God, I want to surrender my way for your way. God, will you come into my life? I want to follow you all the days of my life. And that journey begins today. So, Lord, we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God. We'll give the Lord a big hand praise.